This week, we're going to build a Black River epoxy table. I'm going to show you the steps, the methods and techniques we took in building this beauty. I'm also going to give you guys a ton of tips along the way if you guys do want to attempt to build your own river table. Now starting this week's project off, we're going to cut our slab in half. Now for this specific project, the wood species we're using is called the jackalberry. It's a reddish orange color. Absolutely beautiful. Now the client we're building this table for required that we build this table slightly bigger width wise. So you'll see there in the background, the other half of my slab is lying there because this specific slab I'm cutting in half now is not wide enough to make a beautiful river table. Because all the tables we built, we tried to keep a 60% to 70% wood to about 30 to 40% epoxy. That for us is a good ratio because you don't want too much epoxy on your table. So what I'm busy doing now is marking on the underside of my table to know exactly where I need to cut so my slab is going to fit into the white melamine sheet mold I'm going to build for this project. And the tool for this job is called a HK85 face tool track saw. It's making my life very easy to cut my slabs to size. Now I am going to be honest for this project my blade was dull and I was basically just too lazy to go to the Home Depot or Hardware to buy a new blade. So I made multiple cuts and you'll see down at the bottom of the scene, there's black marks on the side of my wood. That means the wood basically burnt when I cut it. Now the next step I want to give you is, you guys see I'm putting my epoxy out in the sun. That's because I want the epoxy to heat up slightly, meaning that with our experience building tables and to help reduce bubbles as much as possible, we heat the epoxy up slightly. What I'm busy doing now is adding my pigments into my epoxy and the specific epoxy we're using for this project is deep casting epoxy, meaning that I can pour my complete table in one go, but yet again, with our experience, we do multiple layers of casting. And you're going to ask why using multiple layers of casting if you're going to use a deep casting epoxy? Well, for us, it helps us to reduce air bubbles as much as possible. Now, I know there's a lot of guys out there building tables that's using different methods and techniques, but this is working for us. Now you'll see me speeding up the next scene in this video. That's because in reality, we are pouring our epoxy at a slow pace. This is also helping us to reduce bubbles as much as possible. Now, once we poured our first layer of epoxy, we wait around about 30 to 40 minutes. Then we'll come with our gas flame gun to remove all the air bubbles. We will come back the next day now you'll see me i'm pouring the epoxy this is the next day now the first layer of epoxy i casted we wait for that epoxy to become tacky now tacky means that the epoxy becomes very sticky not hard not solid it becomes sticky that is going to help the second layer of epoxy going to cast to bond with the first layer now we will repeat this process until our table is casted to the top. Yet again, we wait for around about 30 to 40 minutes, then we'll come with our gas torch to remove all the air bubbles. This is a definite must. I know there's a lot of guys using a heat gun. We haven't used a heat gun before, but apparently it's working. So there's nothing wrong with using that method. So once we casted our table fully to the top, 
we typically would wait around about five to seven days to give the epoxy sufficient time to get fully hard and cleared. Then we will come and remove our table from its mold. And the next steps to follow is we would load our table on a trailer and take it to our local CNC supplier to get our slab flattened on top and at the bottom. This basically means that we make the surface of our table level. Now for a small woodworking company like us, unfortunately at this stage we can't afford our own CNC machine. This is why we take it to a local CNC supplier that's got a CNC machine. That basically makes sense. Now you can do this with a manual router sled, but with our experience in doing what we are currently doing, it saves us a lot of time and money. Fast forwarding a bit, having the table back in our shop, it's time to cut our table down to its final size. And as always, and I will stick to what I'm going to tell you next is once you design and plan your table, always build your table slightly bigger lengthwise and widthwise. This is just going to give you room for error if you're going to make a mistake somewhere down the line. Now, once you're going to cut your table down to its final size, we will always come to do multiple cuts. So we won't come and cut our table down to its final size in one go. We will do around about two to three cuts to get it down to its final size. And another tip I want to give you guys in having a perfectly square table is to start cutting one longer side of your table down first. Then you plumb that longer side down to the opposite longer side. Then you cut that size down to its final size. Then the next step is to move to your two shorter sides of your table. Now what we will typically do is, as you can see in the scene here, I've got my big square. And I'm squaring my track off to make sure it's perfectly square. And put my square on the other side of the table to make sure my track is perfectly square. Then I'll come and cut my table down. To its final size. So we are continuously looking for new ways to improve our own content and videos. So if you guys do have any recommendations, what do you want to see? What do you guys want us to take out? Um, if you have any recommendations, that will be highly, highly appreciated. We are still a small woodworking company with a small woodworking channel and we will honestly love to grow and we will love to grow our community and obviously become one of the biggest DIY channels on the platform. So leave me a comment down below. What will you recommend? We would honestly appreciate it. So moving down to the next step and that's by giving our table a small 45 degree chamfer right around now this is our go-to on all our tables because we like keeping the thickness of the table now before we move to the next step i just want to share with you guys we currently do have a online epoxy masterclass where we basically share all our methods and techniques for you to be able to build your first epoxy table successfully or you already built a table and you want to learn more this class and course is run about three hours long. It's going into detail on basically everything we do in building the perfect table. Now, I thought for Black Friday, the prices are, well, the prices on the course are going up very soon. It's going to be $150. So currently, we're still running our course at $89. So you guys do want to go and check it out before the prices are going up. I'm going to leave a link down in the description if you guys do want to go and check the course out. And I'm also going to leave a short preview at the end of this video for you guys to see what the course is all about. That being said, moving down to the oiling stage and the final preparation of our table. We will wipe our table down with a microfiber cloth and we will get our polish machine out. Now the polish machine is obviously not to polish 
the table. It's just to remove the last dust particles from our project. Now for this table, the client wanted a smoky black finish on his epoxy, meaning that the epoxy section of our table, we only sand it down to 400 grit sandpaper. Then we used a scorch pad to smoothen the epoxy off. The wooden section of this table, we only sand it to 220 grit. Now, the oil we're using for this project is called Odis oil. What I love about Odis oil is you're basically allowed, well, according to Odis, you can sand to any grit your heart desires, meaning your wood is going to be a very smooth surface if you're going to sand higher than 180 grit. Now for us, applying a lot of oil on our tables, and what we've seen work best is if you sand to 220 grit, for us, that's the perfect grit for the oil to penetrate best into the wood. Now, before I'm going to leave you guys with the final product, and if you guys do want to help us grow as a channel and a small woodworking company and help us to produce future content, go and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave us a comment down below. What do you guys think of this project and what would you have done differently? We would always love your recommendations and your comments is much appreciated. Before I go, make sure you stick around until the end of this video to see the masterclass and enjoy the final product. Thank you guys and I'll see you next week with another super cool video. Oh, before you head out, make sure to go and follow us on all the social media platforms. I'm also going to leave a link down in the description where you can follow us. Thanks guys, see you next week with another super cool video. Cheers. Welcome to this online epoxy masterclass. Moisture content. You heat right into the core wood species to remove the bark with an aggressive steel wire brush. Table design, slab preparation, building process, epoxy mold. Release agent wax. Calculate epoxy. Seven, eight, so we got 16 points. Mixing epoxy. Color consistency. Whether to seal your life edges or not. Pouring epoxy. Sanding between layers. Sanding grooves inside your epoxy. Dealing with bubbles. Maximum depth curing time. Removing the table from your mold. Our local CNC supplier. Start sanding. Cutting your table to size and edge. Filling the cracks and holes. Smoky finish. High gloss see through finish. Wood surface finishing. Tabletop supports. To drill into our wooden section. Our online epoxy masterclass is finally here. It's four hours of masterclass where I'm going into detail on how we build all our epoxy tables. Where I'm going to teach you from start to finish how to build a epoxy table successfully. I'm going to show you all our methods and techniques we take in our everyday business building epoxy tables successfully. Down in the description of this video, you're going to find the details on how to purchase this masterclass. You don't want to miss this one.